<laughs> Join my fight! <laughs> Hey guys, are you here? And today I'm playing some more Rogue Mage 2v2, and I want to walk you guys through how to beat Rhett and Mistweaver. So jumping into the game, guys, we're playing the same spec as always. Um, as that fire specialization, we're playing Greater Pyroblast, Controlled Burn, and Temp Shield. This is the best combination that I've found to work in Rogue Mage 2v2 against the majority of matchups. And we're playing Searing Touch to finish off with those Scorches. Um, we are playing Shimmer and Canners, Meteor, and just all of the talents that I would normally choose here as Fire Mage. Nothing too, too crazy. And we are not playing Phoenix Flames. We're going with the Fire Blast, uh, Triple Fire Blast instead, and going with that Living Bomb choice as well, even though we don't hit it too much. If you guys want more in-depth, um, you know, tutorials or guides on the actual spec breakdown and why I'm playing this spec, check out my Fire Mage guide. Um, it is uploaded and up to date for the new patch. So, um, jumping into this game though, we're fighting Rhett Mistweaver, like previously mentioned. We're fighting a human Rhett Paladin and Void Elf Mistweaver. And one of the first things that I always tell you guys when we when we jump into the game is you want to look at trinket usage. You know what trinkets are they? Are they adaptation, relentless, or trinket? And you want to look at their races, right? Are they human, orc? Um, Night Elf, Void Elf, because that's going to depend how you play. So it's a Human Paladin and a Void Elf Monk. Um, and our general openers, we're both going to start Stealth. My Rogue Stealth and I'm Stealth. We sap the guy that we're trying to kill. And in this case, we um, are going on the Rhett Paladin. So in this matchup, we want to go Rhett Pally. And we sap the guy we want to kill and cast a Greater Pyroblast into the sap target. And the reason we're doing this is because um, it forces the Monk into an awkward position, right? It forces the monk to be like, okay, do I stop the greater pyroblast? If he runs it at me and tries to para the greater pyroblast, we can always kidney shot him on his way in. Um, but it starts the pally basically 35% lower than he normally would. And while the first greater is in the air, if the monk doesn't stop me, I can start casting a second greater. So we'll see what go, you know, what happens here in the opener. Monk's trying to play really far, and we get one greater. And by the time the first greater hits, it's about to hit right now. We almost have a second greater off. The full kidney shot comes off with the monk up at top. We're going to try to poly it, ring of frost, um, sap off that, blind off that, duel off that, some type of CC off that kidney shot, and we're going to continue damage here on the pally. Now, I could probably hold my combustion just because pally has a bubble. It's a hard out. If I pop greater pyroblast and combust, we get bubble. But if I pop greater pyroblast without combust, we'll also get bubble. So if you do the math on that one, that's a wasted combustion. So we should probably not combust here. If we want, we can maybe pop on use trinket or maldic to try to force that bubble. But with two greater pyros in the air, it should be um, a pretty easy bubble to get here. So two greater pyros, boom, full poly on the healer off that kidney, and we get bubble. The number one thing I want to outline in this opener, guys, is that I did not use combustion. I get the question all the time. When do I use combust in the opener and when do I not use combust in the opener? My answer is, guys, you have to assess the situation. Positioning, classes, cooldowns, how much damage do you get off? How much damage are you going to need? I knew we were going to get this bubble without the combust, so I didn't need to combust. But if it's another class where, okay, he doesn't have a hard out, maybe like um, a warrior, and the, the monk is across the map, I'm going to pop combust and just kill the warrior in the opener. If it's a pally without a bubble, that's when we pop combust, right? So it just really depends on the situation. In this in this situation, we knew the pally was just going to bubble with the with the kidney shot into the polys, so we don't need to wait to combust. This second poly was a little bit questionable. We could have maybe just completely reset and polyed the pally instead, ran away, did another go. But I poly the monk um, and start casting the G5. So maybe not the greatest play here, but we keep the greater pyro pressure. And this is very important. If the pally is chasing my rogue... What is my best peel? Well, there's two ways to do it. One, I could poly the pally. Two, I can peel with offensive pressure. The saying goes, the best defense is a good offense, right? If I'm just casting greater pyros over and over and over onto the enemy paladin, guess what? He now has to start playing defensive because he's not 100% life. So I'm spamming greater pyro after greater pyro. This isn't to kill him, but it's to make the monk have to heal so the monk's not running at us with damage. So it makes the monk pinned. He has to sit there and heal. Then it brings the pally to the mindset of, oh crap, I have to, you know, line of sight or be aware of these greater pyroblasts actually coming at him. They're not to kill him, but they're to keep the enemy pinned, right? So my rogue can get a restealth. My rogue, boom, got that restealth. Now he's coming back in. Pally got to us. We popped the temp shield. Step kick comes out. Way the crane follows and full polymorph on 
to the healer um hopefully here in a second because we sheep the ret a couple times for the setup and i like this sheep in the ret double nova any second we can go here and they actually get me very low just with a couple melee attacks and this is one of our easier compositions i'm not gonna lie ret miss sweeper definitely can win a lot of the times but look at that i'm 40 percent life they only hit me for what two or three seconds because that's you know paladin cooldowns weight crane just boom crit down to 40 percent we get the cheap shot and the kidney shot coming out pally bobs that kidney right off but i can probably full sheep the miss sweeper right here um, i get leg sweep so i actually can't so this was a bad go right and i'm actually happy that this was in the game here because not every game is perfect if this game was perfect we would kidney shot the mist reaver into the poly he would shrink it we'd full blind we'd kill a pally and the smoke bomb boom game's over this game didn't go according to plan sheep the pally a couple times trying to reset i liked it i get hit to 40 percent uh we get the cheap shot on the monk but he paras into the leg sweep not good right not good that's why you always want to kidney on the off target not kidney on the main target so that kidney shot would have been there. We would have gotten that full poly on the Mist Reaver, and we might have forced trinkets or bubbles here. But we got the bop and the bubble out from the Paladin. It's going to be another go, right? So we're spell stealing a couple times. We're going to sheep the Paladin, um, and just um, not to flame the enemy team, but just to tell you guys what these guys should be doing right here is pushing in on us. The reason they should be pushing in on us is because the Pally's immune to stuns because he's already been stunned three times, and the Mist Reaver's half DR and stuns. He's already been stunned once. These guys should not be running away. So to Eric and McElroy, if you guys are watching, if this is the time where you guys should be pushing into us, actually killing us. We're both 40% life. But regardless, um, we're sheeping the Paladin, um, you know, so we can't actually push in and kill my rogue or me. Uh, my rogue's getting a restyle. Try to get the greater Pyroblast for that same reasoning, right? We want to try to get continued pressure onto the enemy team. Boom. One greater lands. Another cheap shot on the Mistweaver. We really, I do not think, should be doing that. Maledict comes out and I have to block. And the reason, so this game's actually going terrible. Um, so once again, could have kidney shot the monk into the poly, went on the pally. He um, forces me into ice block because he puts that maledict onto me. Maledict um, kind of absorbs the cauterized seal, so you actually can't wait for cauterized to proc. You're gonna have to ice block before it. So that's why I'm going to ice block right here. So this game is an abs absolute um, shit show, right? It's not really going the way we wanted to. Um, we do get the trinket from the pally and the cocoon though, and then the smoke bomb comes out as well. So once again, if we just get another stun on the monk. Um, you know, blind him for his trinket, another stun on the monk, poly the monk, and we can still kill a pally. We still have combustion. Why have I not used combust, right? Why have I not used combust? We have not had a good go since the opener. In the opener, we already got bubble. So I'm not just going to use combust unless it's a time where the combust is actually going to get the kill. We blind the monk. He does trinket. And now guess what, guys? They have no trinkets, no bubbles, no bobs, I don't think. No anything. We win this game in one more go. All we have to do is double cc pop combustion on use meteor fire blast guy's dead i'm also at nine percent life and we want to keep that in mind but we don't want to freak out saying like oh crap i'm nine percent life how am i gonna it's just i have barrier coming up in four seconds i have temp shield available i have my cauterize um to still heal us a little bit and i have one blink available right they have no trinkets we win this game in 17 seconds as soon as this next go happens and i need to sheep this pally i have dragon's breath diminishing return as well let's see what we do here we come out, we blink away, we steal the enveloping, enveloping sealing us a bit. We run around the corner trying to get the Ring of Frost down. Monk pairs us for a couple seconds, Pally's catching up. We pop the Temp Shield um, to kind of mitigate some of the damage. Dragon's Breath comes out. We're going to sheep the Pally right before the setup, or sheep the Monk actually for that setup, full kidney lands, right? From the last time I paused the video, that was 17 seconds, right? Look at this, I'm going to rewind. Right here, 17 seconds. This is where we were last paused. 17 on that DR, 16. 15, 14, 13, we come out, barrier, around the corner, 10, 9, we win this game in 7, 6, like we win right here, 5, 4, 3, dragon's breath, full sheep, 2, 1, and Pally should die right here, right, so we have the greater pirate blast meteor, now we pop the combustion, this is every single cooldown in the entire game, I actually should have, <laughs> I should have resheathed the, the monkey here, so if I resheathed the monkey, would have killed, now if the monkey has got killed, the Pally will actually live, but um, we do get the resap. Okay, so we have the resap instead of that poly, and the and the pally goes down. There it is, right? That was a great, great, great game for you know having some mistakes or some. I, I don't even want to call them mistakes, right? Because shit happens even when you're playing rogue mage at the highest level, right? Games are different; they're variable. It's not just like oh, double stun, get a trinket, double stun, get the other trinket, double stun, kill. It's not that simple. A lot of the times, you know, stuff like this is gonna happen. You have to improvise and kind of see, you know, how to actually formulate the kill how to actually get the kill 
um, on your on your kill windows. How long is it going to take to actually set that up? So in this specific game, we saw what we had. We saw that we had the kill. We had all the cooldowns. All we had to do is get the double stun. We lived 17 more seconds. We got the full sheep off the dragon's breath, the full kidney. Then we use the combustion because we know it's actually going to get the kill, get a lot of value, and then you know we finish out the game there. So that was a nice game, right? Overall, great game. Um, it's not you know not not how every single game is going to look, but I think this um, video should give you a really really good idea on how rogue mage should be able to beat ret misweaver. And I, I and a lot of my videos I say like oh this is not you know you're not supposed to really beat this. I think this is a competition that rogue mage can actually beat a lot of the time. Rhett Mistweaver is certainly one of our easier compositions. I'm um, not saying that, you know, Rhett Mistweaver can definitely get some wins as well. I'm not saying it's a, it's a counter comp for them. Um, as you can see, I'm, I got some 9% life, even though we, we actually, you know, we're getting nice setups. Still 9% life in a couple, just a couple attacks. So, and we have no healer. If stuff goes wrong, we can definitely lose that game. Here's the damage breakdown. Fire Mage coming up top, followed by Rhett, followed by Rogue. Um, something that you, you would probably expect something along those lines. But yeah, we're queuing at 22, 2300 MMR. And yeah, that's how to beat Rhett Mistweaver as Rogue Mage. Guys, if you enjoyed this video and all of these Rogue Mage breakdowns, make sure to give the video a big thumbs up. If you did not enjoy this video um, and you want to see other types of content, that's okay. Thumbs the video down and let me know what you guys want to see down below in the comments. I definitely love to read your guys' comments. Guys, make sure to go follow me on Instagram. I've been posting on Instagram pretty much daily. Instagram stories when I'm uh, going live on Twitch when these new YouTube videos go live and uh, fitness, nutrition, and other stuff that interests me as well. So definitely go follow me over on Instagram, sorry you LOL. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next upload. Peace.